Hello everyone, how are you doing today? My name is Shande Huzi and this is the first episode of the basic Matron tutorial series. If you did not watch the episode 0, which is a intro slash overview of this software, I highly recommend you guys go there and watch first, so you can click on the screen or on the link in the description, and after you watch it, you can come back here. Today we will learn how to make this nice bouncing ball. Why would I want to learn this, you may ask? Well, we will learn two important things today. The first is, we will learn about the transfer node, which is a powerful tool that Natron offers us to make basic and advanced animation. And the other thing is how to create and edit keyframes using the Natron's Curve Editor, which is another powerful tool that Natron offers us. No more talking, let's go ahead and start this tutorial from the beginning. Let's create a new project here. This is the Natron version I'm using. First thing we have to do, let's change this frame rate to 30 frames per second. And now we can start our project. First of all, let's create a solid in Natron is called constant. To do that, we just have to right click on the node area, then go into image and then constant. Let's call this constant ball and change its color to a nice blue like this. Okay. Now, let's create a merge node, right click, merge and merge, so let's link the A in the ball, okay, and now we have a solid color. There's two ways that we can create a ball shape in here, we can either go into draw and create a roto and then choose ellipse, then click and drag and create, create this roto. And plug it into the mask factor here. And there's another way, which I think it's easier. We just have to go into draw and choose radio. Okay. Then we just plug this mask factor here. And now we have this feathered ball. We don't want this, so we have to decrease this feather. To do this, we just double click on the radio. We just have to decrease this softness amount here. And let's give it a nice rounded shape. Let's close everything here. Now, how do I animate this ball? We will animate this, as I said before, using the transfer node. To create a transfer node, you can select the last node on your nodes tree and then hit T on your keyboard or you can just select the merge node and go into transform and transform. Now we have these handles here. These handles have pretty much everything we need to manipulate stuff. So we can scale this, we can rotate this, and we can move. These are the basic things we need to animate. As we want to make a bouncing ball, we need the anchor point or the center of these handles to be at the bottom of the ball. So in order to do this, you just have to press control on your keyboard, then click and drag to the place you want. I want it to be right here. Now the animation will be based on this anchor point. Before we start animating, I will explain the basics of the transform node. The first here is the translate. We can move on the X and on the Y axis. We can right click and reset to the full. This will reset the initial position of the node. Then we can rotate here. These are pretty much the stuff that that handle this. But located at the properties window, we can scale. Okay. We can lock the scale. So if we change this value here, it will increase and decrease uh, one related to each other. We can skew this. We can change the center point, which we already changed that time by holding control and dragging the handle. And here at the bottom, we have the motion blur settings. I uh, will show you guys at the end of this tutorial. So let's go ahead and start animating. First of all, let's change the frame range. I want an animation from the frame 1 to the frame 50. We can see that if I change to 100 and click with the middle mouse button on this black timeline area, it will zoom on our frame range. So let's get back to 50. 
click with the metal mouse button and you can see that each of these parameters has this animation menu. If you click on this, you can see that there's a set key for all the animations. What that means is that it will create a keyframe for the X value and for the Y value. Here is the interpolation that this keyframe will be created. And there's expression and clear expressions that is more advanced stuff. Let's start by bringing this ball right up here at the frame one and set the keyframe to the translate. Then on the frame 10 on the timeline, let's bring the ball down at the bottom like this. The frame 15, let's bring the ball up. The frame 20, let's bring it down again. 25, bring it up a little bit less than the last time. Then at the frame 30, let's bring it down again. And 35, bring it up a little less than the last time. Bring it down again. 45, bring it up. And frame 50, let's bring it to the ground again. You can see that this is kind of a crap animation. It's not good. So now it's time for us to edit this using the curve editor. Here, if you control alt and click with a middle mouse button, you can bring it down and bring it to the right or to the left to shrink or to make this graph a little bit bigger. Now we can see all the keyframes that we have in here. These dots are the keyframes. Okay, so every dot that we see here is a keyframe. We can see that if we drag this here when the ball hits the ground, there's keyframes. When it goes up, there's other keyframes. What are these keyframes? This pink line here represents the translate X, is this X movement. And there's not much movement on that. So I think we can delete everything here on this pink line. This way our ball will only give it a straight bounce, okay? So let's play to see how it is. Now, there's one thing we need to fix in here. When the ball hits the ground, you can see that this is represented by a smooth movement. How do I know this? Because the graph of this keyframe is showing me that the ball comes and smoothly hits the ground and smoothly goes to its top position here. When a ball hits the ground, this is not a smooth movement. It's a harsh movement. So we have to change this smooth graph to a linear graph. How do we do this? We select this keyframe. We can either click and drag, we call box select, or we can just click on the keyframe and right click interpolation and choose linear. Now let's add some scratch and stretch to give it a cartoonish style to this movement. To do this, we just have to animate the scale. I'll just make it my way. If you know a better way to do this, I recommend you do it your way. In the frame before the bomb hits the ground, I wanted to have this same size. So I will create a keyframe for the scale. But before I do this, I don't want this to be uniform because I want the ball to scratch and stretch. So I will uncheck uniform and click on these two. Now we have these separate values for the X scale and for the Y scale. Now I can click on set key. I just click on this icon here and then set key. And now we can see that nothing happens on our graph. That is because we have to select scaling here and now we have our keyframe. But we just lost the other keyframes that we are using as reference. So to select all of them, you just have to select the translate, then shift select scale. Now we see everything, okay? So now on the frame that the ball hits the ground at the first time, I want it to squatch a little bit. So I'll do it with the handle. Make it squatch. Then in the frame that it gets on its stop position, I want it to get back and have 
it's one value. Then I'll repeat the process. And the frame before it hits the ground, I want it to have one. If we want to repeat a value, we just have to put it again and click enter and it will create a keyframe we can see here. Then on the frame that it hits the ground, I will squash a little bit. Then when it comes right up, I will make it get back to one. Then on the keyframe before it hits the ground, I want one again. And when it hits the ground, I will squash a little bit. Then when it comes up, one. One frame before it hits the ground, one again. When it gets to the ground, scratch a little bit, just a bit this time. Then when it comes up, I want it to be one again. And the last time, I want scratch. For some reason, Natron just changed these bottom keyframes to smooth to the smooth graph again so let's just box select this then right click interpolation linear let's also do this for the scale keyframes when the ball hits the ground so select interpolation linear select interpolation linear okay Let's play this. It's not bad. Now we can stretch the ball a little bit when it falls. So right when the ball is falling, I want to change to give it a stretch like this. When it's coming up again, between these keyframes and these keyframes. I'll stretch a little bit again. Then between these keyframes and these keyframes, I'll do the same. And repeat the process. Okay. Let's play this. This movement is really, really cartoonish. It has this exaggerated scratch and stretch thing. It's not bad. If you want to make something more realistic, you can too. But this is just my way for doing it. Okay, the last thing we need is to make this ball to have some motion blur. In order to do this, we just double click the transform node and on its properties panel, we just have to increase this motion blur value from 0 to 1. And if we hit play, you can see that the movement is a lot more smooth. Let's close this panel a little bit just to get rid of these handles so we can see a little better. Okay, it's not bad. Let's double click on the transform node again. And these other parameters here are the shutter, which I think is about the shutter speed. So if you increase this value, you will have more motion blur. And if you decrease, you have less motion blur. Now let's make a background for this. So let's create a constant. Let's call this PG one. Let's choose a blue color and let's desaturate this a little bit and make it dark like this. Okay, let's hit M on the keyboard to create a merge node. And let's make this merge node stay between the transfer node and our viewer. Now it's acting like our background, like we want. But I don't want it to be this simple. I want some radio ramp here. So let's create another merge node. So select the BG1 and hit M on the keyboard. And let's duplicate it, so Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Let's call this BG2. And let's give it a darker color. Okay. 
and let's plug this on the A channel. You can see that the BG2 is replacing the BG1, but that's no problem. We just have to create another radio node and use it as a factor for this merge over. So let's unplug this, take the mask factor, plug on the radio, and then plug the B again on this merge tree. We don't want this radio to act like this, so let's invert this by selecting the radio, right click, color, invert, OK. And now let's just scale and reposition it. I want this to be very subtle, so I'll make it very big like this. Let's get back, hit play, and see what's going on here. Okay, that's not bad. If you saw my last video, you know that sometimes before we render out our sequences, it might occur some alpha errors. So let's check the alpha channel. Okay, we can see that everything is white. So we know that when we render this out, we will have no alpha problems. So let's change back to RGB and let's render this as an image sequence. In order to do this, we right click, go to image writers, select this option. Let's choose a path. Let's give it a name. Let's put this hashtag symbol. So Nitro knows that it must save as a sequence. Let's leave it a sequence and let's leave it a JPG. Let's hit save. And now here it pops up the properties of this new node. The way we do this, we just have to plug this node into the last node on our node tree, or we can just hold control. So Nitro will show us where we can create some dots. And I'll just click here after the last merge node and I'll plug the source into this dot. Here on this properties panel, we will leave everything as it is except for the frame range. We will put manual. We want from frame 1 to frame 50. And let's increase the quality to 100%. Let's hit render. And now let's load what we render out back to Natro to see if it rendered OK. So right click on the node error image, read, select our sequence. Let's unplug everything here. Delete. Let's unplug the viewer one. And before we plug in our sequence, let's double click the sequence and check this custom FPS and put 30. Now let's link this one from the viewer one and release it in the top of this red node and hit play. Okay, we can see that our animation plays okay. So guys, this is the result of this tutorial. I hope you learned something from this. I hope it was useful and I also hope you liked it. 